Chapter 1. Observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjay, after assembling in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do, being desirous to fight? Sanjay said, O king, after looking over the army gathered by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhan went to his teacher and began to speak the following words. O my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupa. Here in this army, there are many heroic bowmen equal in fighting to Bhima and Arjuna. There are also great fighters like Yuyudan, Virata, and Drupada. There are also great heroic powerful fighters like Dristaketu, Chetiktana, Kasiraj, Purujit, Kuntiboj, and Shaivya. There are the mighty Yudamanyu, the very powerful Uttamanuja, the son of Subhadra and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. O oh, best of the Brahmanas, for your information let me tell you about the captains who are especially qualified to lead my military force. There are personalities like yourself, Bhishma, Karna, Kripa, Asvatama, Vikarna, and the son of Somadatta, called Burishrava, who are always victorious in battle. There are also many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and are all experienced in military science. Our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by Grandfather Bhishma, whereas the strength of the Pandavas, carefully protected by Bhima, is limited. Now, all of you must give full support to Grandfather Bhishma, standing at your respective strategic points in the phalanx of the army. Then Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conch shell very loudly, like the sound of a lion giving Duryodhan joy. After that, the conch shells, bugles, trumpets, drums, and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was tumultuous. On the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses sounded their transcendental conch shells. Then Lord Krishna blew his conch shell called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his the Devadatta, and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pongaram. King Yudhishthir, the son of Kunti, blew his conch shell, the Ananta Vijay, and Nakula and Sahadev blew the Sugosh and Mani Pushpaka. That great archer, the king of Kashi, the great fighter Sikandi, Dristadyumna, Virat, and the unconquerable Satyaki, Dropada, the sons of Dropadi, and others, O king, such as the son of Subhadra, great, greatly armed, all blew their respective conch shells. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, and thus vibrating both in the sky and on earth, it shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. O king, at that time, Arjuna, the son of Pandu, who, seated, who was seated in his chariot, his flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows, looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra. O king, Arjuna then spoke to Rishikesh, Krishna, these words. Arjuna said, O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see who is present here, who is desirous of fighting, and with whom I must contend in this great battle attempt. Let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil-minded son of Dhritarashtra. Sanjay said, O descendant of Bharat, being thus addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. In the presence of Bhishma, Drona and all other chieftains of the world, Rishikesh, the Lord, said, Just behold, Partha, all the Kurus who are assembled here. There Arjuna could see within the midst of the armies of both parties his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, 
and also his father-in-law and well-wishers all present there. When the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth is drying up. My whole body is trembling and my hair is standing on end. My bow Gandhiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning. I am now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself and my mind is reeling. I foresee only evil, O killer of the Keshi demon. I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle, nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom, or happiness. O Govinda, of what avail to us are kingdoms, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed in this battlefield? O Madhusudan, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-laws, uh, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and relatives, and all relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me, then why should I wish to kill them, though I may survive? O maintainer of all creatures, I am not prepared to fight with them, even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune? And how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? O Janardana, although these men, overtaken by greed, see no fault in killing one's own family or quarreling with friends, why should we, with knowledge of the sin, engage in these acts? With the destruction of the dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished, and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligious practice. When irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become corrupt, and from the degrad from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Vrishni, comes unwanted progeny. When there is an increase of unwanted population, a hellish situation is created both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. In such corrupt families, there is no offering of oblations of food and water to the ancestors. Due to the evil deeds of the destroyers of family tradition, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. O Krishna, maintainer of the people, I have heard by disciplic succession that those who destroy family traditions dwell always in hell. Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. I would consider it better for the sons of Dhritarashtra to kill me unarmed and unresisting rather than to fight with them. Sanjay said, Arjuna having spoken thus on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed with grief. <laughs>